The peace be on you. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar Shakir, and I'm resident imam of Masjid Bilal Ibn Rabah in San Antonio, Texas. We want to welcome you to our third Sunday Talim, and I will open up in the traditional fashion. We open up offering the supplication entitled Al Fatiha. It is a prayer, but it is also the first chapter in the Muslim holy book, the Quran. So we will offer it in its original language and give a translation. A'udhu billahi minash shaitan yirajim. Bismillahi rahman yirajim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen ar-Rahman yirajim. Maliki yawmideen. Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'in. Ihadina sirat al-mustaqeen. سيرات الذين أنعمت عليهم غير مغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين A translation I seek refuge with God from Satan the rejected enemy and with God's name the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer the complete and perfect praise is for Allah the Lord keeper sustainer evolver of all the systems of knowledge the merciful benefactor the merciful redeemer sole owner of the day of judgment Thee alone do we worship, and thine aid we seek. Show us the straight way, the way of those on whom thou hast bestowed thy grace, not the way of those who have earned your anger, nor the way of those who have gone astray. Amen. As always, I begin with Allah's name, Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim, the merciful benefactor, the merciful redeemer. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. We give Allah the complete and perfect praise. He is our Lord, keeper, sustainer, evolver of all the systems of knowledge. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah wa wahtuhu la sharika la. Wa ashadu anna muhammadin abduhu wa rasuluhu sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa amma ba'd. I bear witness there is no God but God. He is without partners or associates and there is nothing like unto him. And I further witness that Muhammad, to whom the Qur'an was revealed, that he is Allah's slave, slave servant and his messenger, the prayers and the peace be on him, and what follows of that salutation. As we get into our presentation today, I want to encourage you to take notes, and I want to encourage you to comment or ask questions. This is Talim. Talim again has to do with education, has to do with teaching, has to do with learning. So we encourage you to engage us this afternoon as we look at this very important topic. Today's Talim is entitled Santa and His Reindeer Hidden Messages. Now, I know we're probably fed up by now with conspiracy theories. But it's important for us to understand that all communication is not always out in the open. Communication sometimes is subtle. Communication sometimes is for a select group of people and individuals, which communicate over the heads of the common person. In this Santa and the reindeer story, as you know, it's a myth. It's not, it's not real. Santa's not real. Reindeer flying through the air is not real. So it's a myth. So then what are we trying to communicate? I know many of us, we look and we look back and we say, oh, this is innocent. This is just fun stuff. You know, more fairy tales. It makes it more enjoyable and more uh, entertaining for the children. But we also have to ask questions. Why do certain things happen around certain occasions or holidays? It is no secret that this coming Friday is Christmas in the United States of America and throughout the world. Christmas is a very special time for our Christian brothers and sisters. Christmas for them has to do with the birth of Jesus upon him be peace and celebrating who he is in their tradition. So why don't we ask the question, if it's all about the celebration of a savior. Again, I have to be clear, I'm speaking from the Christian standpoint. The Muslims don't celebrate Christmas. 
the Muslim's savior is Almighty God. That's the Muslim savior, who we call Allah. The point is, though, it, it, it bears asking the question, how did we get a Christmas tree associated with Christmas? How do we get Santa and the reindeer associated with Christmas? These are the things that we should ask, and I'm not here today to answer those questions. It's just food for thought. Because also, if you follow this logic to its conclusion, you could also look at another sacred time for our Christian brothers and sisters called Easter. And Easter is a time for our Christian brothers and sisters about the resurrection of Jesus upon him be peace. But somehow there's a rabbit tied to, to Easter and there's eggs tied to Easter. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not blowing any whistle here. Many of our Christian brothers and sisters have already acknowledged certain scholars, pastors, leaders in the tradition. They have acknowledged that paganism has crept into these sacred holidays. So for me to get into this topic and to do it justice, and again, I won't hold you very long, but this is not going to be a 30-minute presentation. So sit in, sit down, strap in, and get ready for the ride. And again, I hope that you will engage us throughout. Since we're talking about Santa and we're talking about his reindeer and hidden messages, where we're ultimately going with this, we're going to a place where Satan, the devil, by design, has corrupted and has infected everything that we hold sacred. I'm going to explain a little bit more about this in a minute, but this is important for us to understand. Satan, the devil, was never satisfied with you and I being in charge of our lives. Jealous, disturbed, upset by the fact that Almighty God chose the human being to give the trust to. And again, I'm going to explain just a little bit more about that in just a moment. But brothers and sisters, what I want us to understand this is not just a conspiracy theory. What I want us to understand is that it is human nature. It is the way of societies. It is the way of organizations. It is the way of governments to speak in symbolic language. Now, I hope you could appreciate this and, and, and understand this in a clear f fashion. I'm going to say it this way. Do you think it's accidental? that there's an eye on our dollar bill? Do you think it's accidental that a pyramid is on the dollar bill? Do you think it's accidental that America chose an eagle as its national bird? What we have to understand that whenever these things happen, I mean, we could even go down to a lower common denominator. Do not colleges, do not high schools and other schools choose a mascot and they use a, usually choose an animal as their mascot. They might be called the bulldogs. They might be called the falcons. The point is, all of these things, why these symbols are chosen, is because that organization, that group, that government, that school, their mission and what they're about, or the spirit that is embodied in their organization, has the characteristics of a falcon, the characteristics of a bulldog, or when we talk about the titans or the eagle, etc. All of these things are signs and symbols. And this is a way to communicate without using a whole lot of words. I think I've laid a good foundation. My colleague, Imam Faim Shuaib of Oakland, California, often describes the word myth. Most of us, when we look at myth, we look at it as some type of uh, fiction or some type of fantasy. But I like the way Imam Shuaib describes myth. Myth are truths that are not, necessar not, not necessarily accurate. I'm going to say that again. When you read or you learn of a myth, it has truth in it. Or it is true, but it's not necessarily historically accurate. In other words, there is a message, there is information, there's a body of knowledge contained 
in the myth. And when you pass these myths on from one uh, generation to the next, you preserve a certain knowledge and you communicate a certain truth without telling the whole story. Praise be to Allah. Now, what I want to do, I'm going to start at the beginning. And let me say up front, because I'm choosing this time, and it is a special time, and it is a sacred time to our Christian brothers and sisters, it is not my intent, intent pardon me, to offend or disrespect in any manner. My religion teaches me that Christianity is a legitimate faith. My religion teaches me that Almighty God missioned and sent Jesus upon him be peace. So we have sacred regard for other faiths and, and Jesus upon him be peace is held in high esteem and high regard in our tradition. But brothers and sisters, we're not talking about Jesus today. I want you to stay tuned for this Friday. I'm going to say it now. I'm going to say it again later. This Friday at the Juma message reflection that we give, we will be honoring in our message and celebrating in our message the true life of Jesus upon him be peace. So stay tuned for that. So the way to begin this, since I'm telling you that ultimately Satan is behind all of this, I want to recount for you the story of Satan and how he became Satan in the religion of Islam. My Christian brothers and sisters and perhaps my Jewish brothers and sisters pay close attention because I think you're going to see a similarity. You're going to see a similarity between how we perceive the creation story, meaning specifically the creation of Adam and his wife, and how you perceive it. You're going to see a similarity. Now, one of the things that will be major, there'll be two things that will be majorly different between our assessment and yours. Firstly, your character that ultimately became Satan is named Lucifer. And in your story, Lucifer is the chief among the angels. And then when he disobeyed God, he was cast out of paradise and Ultimately, he became the devil. For us, it's the same character, but we call him Iblis. Lucifer in your tradition, Iblis in our tradition. Iblis is an Arabic word that comes from another word that means he sulked or he despaired. Now, understand something now. If someone is desperate, if someone despairs, they're not thinking logically. They're not thinking rationally. And they're only acting to preserve their own self-interest. And sometimes they will do something that does not produce the best outcome for them. There's a negative consequence for what they do. So put a pin in that and keep that in mind. But the other thing that's different between us and our Jewish and Christian brothers, perhaps, is that we do not see Lucifer in biblical language, and certainly Iblis in the Quran, we do not see him as an angel. We acknowledge that he was in charge of the angels. We acknowledge that he was chief among angels. We acknowledge that perhaps he was even serving in a role of an angel. But the litmus test that determined that he could not be an angel is that angels have no free will of their own. Angels cannot disobey the command of God, nor do they have an inclination, nor do they have a desire to do so. Both Bible and Quran says that when Almighty God asked the angel, or pardon me, asked Lucifer and Iblis to prostrate or bow before Adam, the angels ended up bowing, but Iblis and Lucifer did not and then we'll get to the rest of the story. So let me speed this up a little bit. The Quran says that Almighty God called the angels together and declared, announced to them that, they were, that he was going to create Adam. When he made this announcement, the angels' response was, are you going to create one 
that sheds blood and cause mischief in the land. Everything is so peaceful. Everything is going so nice. You sure you want to do this? This Adam that you're about to create, we understand in his potential that he could actually cause death and destruction. Almighty God's response was, I know what you know not. And then he went on and he turned to Adam and he said, or, or pardon me, he turned to the angels first. And he said, angels, tell me the nature of certain things in my creation. Tell me the names of certain things in my creation. And the angel's response was, glory be to you, God. We have no knowledge except the knowledge you have given us. What he was actually, what the angels were actually saying was, you have programmed us for a specific role and task, and that's all we know. You haven't taught us the names of things. You haven't taught us the nature of things. So we glorify you and we don't have the ability to do what you're asking. And then Almighty God turned to Adam and said, Adam, tell them the names, tell them the nature of things. And Adam began naming things. So this was proof to them that I have given Adam something that I have not given you. And at this point, the angels were convinced and all of the angels bowed, not so Lucifer, not so Iblis. Almighty God turns to Iblis. I'm going to stay with the Quranic account. Almighty God turns to Iblis and says, what is the matter with you that you do not bow when I, your creator, God commanded you to do so? Iblis said, I will not bow to this creature you made from mud clay, dirt, fashioned into shape. I am better than he. You made me a fire. And God, as a result, again, I'm, I'm giving you an abbreviated version because we want to get to our message. But Almighty God said, in effect, get you down from here. Satan, devil, Iblis, you are the meanest of creatures. And then Iblis realized that he was getting ready to be judged by God. So he asked for a respite. He asked for a delay. He said, oh God, do not judge me yet. Give me delay. Give me respite until the day the dead is raised. At that point, God says, you have respite. And listen to, say, listen to Iblis's response when God gave him respite. He said, all right. You've given me respite. Almighty God, since you have allowed me to stray and you have put me in the wrong, I am now going to attack this Adam. I'm going to attack this creature. I'm going to prove to you that he's unworthy. I'm going to prove to you that he shouldn't be the crown of your creation. I'm going to prove this to you. And the way that I'm going to do it is I'm going to make wrong seem right. I'm going to attack him not in the dope houses. I'm not going to attack him just in corruption. I'm going to lie in the straight path and I'm going to attack him. And my attack will come from the front. It will come from the rear. It will come from the right and the left. I'm going to prove to you that he was unworthy. And then almighty God's response was this. Go for it. And I will fill hell with you and those that follow you. Another of God's response was this. Go ahead and do what you will, Satan, but you will not get my sincere devotees. Another of God's response was this. Do all you can, Satan. What your plan sounds like a plan that leads straight to me. Brothers and sisters, what does that mean? That means that Almighty God will Use the resistance, use the opposition of Satan to purify his believers. We'll use the opposition of Satan to make his faithful stronger in his path. So that resistance, though Satan intends it to bring the believer down, will put the believer in a much better situation. All praise is due to Allah. This is beautiful. So this straight path, this straight way suggests to me religion. Yes, religion is not safe. In the time of Muhammad the prophet, upon him be peace, the prophet became aware that the devil was in the ranks praying 
with the believers. Now, that's, don't get spooky. The point I'm making is you got to understand the devil knows who God is. And the devil, don't forget, the devil didn't say, I'm going to take respite. He asked for respite because he knew he couldn't get respite because until God granted it to him. God is the all-powerful. And I'm going to say this, and then we're going to get to our message. Talking about Santa and his reindeer and hidden messages. Dear family, Iblis is disobedience of God is not what made him Satan. Now I'm going to back up real quick because I told you a few minutes ago that we believe that Iblis and Lucifer were not angels. But I didn't tell you what we believe they are. We believe that they were of the gen race. Of the gen race. The gen race has simil similar qualities and capabilities as the human race, meaning that they have limited free will. And I'm going to stop right there and, and suffice it to say that the fact that a jinn has limited free will and can choose to obey God or disobey God takes Iblis and Lucifer out of the realm of an angel because an angel cannot disobey the command of God. I'll just leave that right there. So with that being said, dear family, it wasn't just the disobedience of God that made Lucifer a devil. And I thank God that that's the case because you and I disobey God too and we don't want to be no devil. What made Lucifer and Iblis a devil not only did they disobey God, they took the position against God and they took the position that they would manipulate and that they would corrupt and be an adversary towards the human being. Yes, they became rebellious. Rebellion is another word for shaitan in Arabic or Satan in English or whatever that language is. He became a rebel. He rebelled against the plan and the divine uh, essence of God. And dear family, God chose the human being because we're worthy. God chose the human being because he knows what he created in us. He knows our potentials and possibilities. And Satan is still, excuse my strong language, Satan is still pissed off. He's still upset of the honor that Almighty God gave the human family. And on some levels, he feels he lost something, that he was debased or he was reduced. So now he's going to attack us and prove that we're unworthy. Now, how, do we, how does he do that? He does that by changing the perception. How does he do that? He does that by manipulating us creating in us false desires. Desires is a word that implies passion, that, that, that implies appetite. This is how he gets to us. And in order for him to rule in us, he has to take away our power. He has to take away our ability to control and chart our destiny by the permission of God and take charge of our lives and, 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 and put our... Uh, plan in motion under the plan of God. Nothing happens without the permission of God. But what I'm saying is part of the dignity that Almighty God gave the human being is that we have a certain amount of self-destination and self-fulfillment. We have the cause and effect. We get what we strive for, as Allah says in the Quran. Praise be to Allah. Praise be to Allah. So, Satan's plan is demonstrated in his conversation in scripture with Adam and his wife, upon them be peace, when Almighty God commanded Adam and his wife not to approach a certain tree in the garden. He told him that if you approach this tree, you will surely die. 
So this put a type of fear in Adam, but here comes Satan moving up to him and wiggling up to him in the form of a, of a serpent in biblical language. But for us, just, just Iblis comes up to him and says, wait a minute, you don't understand what God is saying. He don't mean you're going to actually die. Your eyes are going to become open. You're going to become more like him. You're going to become wise, etc. And this enticed Adam, this seduced him in his passions and in his desire. So what did Satan do? He changed the perception of, of, of Adam's reality and caused him to slip caused him to forget God's command, and caused him to go astray. I hope you all are listening to my language because I'm very deliberate in the words that I'm using. And we pray, Allah, that this sends a message. I want you brothers and sisters to know, at the end of today, my pure intentions, inshallah, is to provide a service with this message, to give you a knowledge and an ability to take back your life. That's my intention with today's message, is to enlighten you. The, the, the average public is so busy living and surviving, just trying to keep the lights on, keep their families together, that they don't have any more energy to do what it takes for them to be self-governing. So they rely on other people to govern them. So, dear family, as we set this up, to give you some proof, and again, I mean no disrespect, this is just a historical fact. To give you proof that Satan lies in the straight path or Satan attacks religion, let's go back to one of the oldest religious institutions that we know of in the world, and that's the Catholic Church. When you study the history of the Catholic Church, there was a time when people were not so receptive to their message or that people that were already in the church were being seduced and enticed away from the church with various uh, pagan rituals and practices. So the church came up with an idea, and I know I'm not doing this justice, but I have to cut to the chase because the fact is when you study the history of the Catholic Church, that they allowed certain secular things that they deemed harmless to come into the, the church as a way of making it more appealing to the common people. And there's more that could be said about that. And I'm not saying this as any malicious type thing. They believe perhaps that let's water this down a little bit to get people interested in coming back to the church, getting people interested to be involved. Now, this is my opinion. This is just strictly my opinion on this. Just Omar's opinion. That they felt perhaps if we can get people in the church with some of these pagan rituals and, and, and pagan concepts, then perhaps they can sit still long enough that they can hear the true divine message of Almighty God and we can rid them of that and they could be fully engulfed and, 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 and embrace the way of God. This is my opinion. I, I don't want to think anything evil or bad about the Catholic Church or any church. I believe they came up with a strategy, perhaps, that backfired on them. Now, These introductory words have taken a little longer than I wanted them to take. So I'm going to modify my presentation to say this. Santa actually Santa is Satan. Plain and simple. Now, how can that be, ma'am? How can Santa be Satan when he's associated with gift giving and bringing joy in the world and giving our children's gifts? I don't believe in coincidences, family. I don't believe in accidents. 
when you take the word Santa, its spelling, and the word Satan, you do not have to change any letters. Just change the order of the letters, and the word that used to spell Santa now spells Satan. The exact same letters, just rearranged. Not only that, one of the nicknames of Santa is Saint Nick. And in Christian theology, there was a term they used for Satan called Old Nick. So I'm making a connection here so you can see. Now, there was actually a Saint Nick in Catholicism. Pardon me, Saint Nicholas. I'm shortening it. He was called Saint Nicholas. And actually, Saint Nicholas was a benefactor. Saint Nicholas was one that was blessed with wealth blessed with status in the church, and he used his wealth and status to bless the society, meaning what? He would go around and secretly give gifts. The story goes that he would even uh, put gifts in a chimney, etc. So there's a parallel between this actual, well, I, I can't say actual because some people say that maybe even he was a myth, but the point is there's a parallel between his practices for the good and Santa's practices or Satan's practices shrouded in Santa. Now, I'm going to give you another something, and I know some of you all think this is outrageous, but I want you to think about this a moment. Almighty God says in the Quran about the devil, Almighty God says that there is nothing that God created that Satan or the devil does not strive to create the like thereof. Why would he strive to create the like thereof to confuse the people? To split the allegiances, split the loyalties, and get him some followers, and maybe get him some worshipers, or maybe give him more power than he actually has. So he sits and waits, and he watches what God does, and he tries to duplicate it. And why is it such a disservice and an injustice of the concept of Santa? Because even us as, as parents, I don't mean Muslim parents, but my mother is listening to this, and she probably will bear witness as, as a Christian parent growing up. We celebrated Christmas. But one of the tools that, that parents use to try to make their children behave is they say, if Santa, if you're not a good boy, if you're not a good girl, then Santa is not going to bring you any presents. You're not going to have a good Christmas this year. And then what are the characteristics? What are the qualities do we give Santa? You all know the song. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good. So be good for goodness sake. Are those not the attributes and characteristics of Almighty God? Isn't God all seeing? Isn't God all-knowing? So now you're elevating the devil and make, um, pardon me, maybe that, wasn't a, maybe that was a Freudian slip. You're out elevating Santa up to the level of God, making him all-knowing, putting good and harm in his hands. In Islam, we would call that shirk. We would call that a, the ascribing and the associating of partners with Almighty God. So my point here is I want you to see what's going on here. Satan is still vying for his power back. Satan is still trying to prove that we're unworthy. So he manipulates us and he watches us from a place we cannot see. So Santa is Satan. In the story of Santa and his reindeer, the story of Santa and his reindeer is a story of how Satan rides the masses. When you look at the spelling of reindeer, in the English language, we have two meanings. Um, pardon me. We have two spellings for rain. We have R-A-I-N, and y'all know what that is. That's just precipitation, water coming down from the sky. But we also have R-E. I -N, which is the rain that is used in the spelling of reindeer. Santa, I'm going to come back to that, 
It is no accident that Santa is dressed in a red suit. Red is a color that is used for passions. And I repeat, Santa gets his passions or gets his manipulation or gets his way in to our lives through our appetites and through our passions. Now, I want to give credit at this particular time. What I'm going to say going forward comes from a book that was written by Imam Dr. Allahuddin Shabazz. And it had to do, I'm, I'm paraphrasing the title, it's available on Amazon right now today. It, it's, a, it's a title that says myths you know, around uh, holidays and things like that. I'm not saying the exact title, but I want to give credit to Imam Dr. Allahuddin Shabazz. I'm getting ready to share with you now his insights. Now, let's go back to the word rain. And I'm not talking about R-A-I-N. I'm talking about R-E-I-N. Listen to this family, because this will give you insight. Because the picture we get is that Santa and his reindeer travel throughout the world in one night, giving out all of these gifts, and the imagery is Santa sitting on a sleigh and these reindeer in front of him, and he's got a harness around them directing them. So the meaning of rein, R-E-I-N, means to hold back, to direct, guide, or control. Deer means beast or wild animal at its root meaning. Now when we think of deer, we don't think of them as a wild beast, but they are. When we hear deer, we think of Bambi. Bambi is a baby deer, and it's also a, a, a fiction, but my point is it grows up into a wild beast. And I have seen footage that if you come up on a deer at the wrong time, you'll see how savage a deer can be. So what does this suggest? I'm going to say it now, and I'll say it again. If rain means to control or hold back or to guide or to control and deer means beast or wild animal, what is the role of Santa? What is the role of Satan? He is manipulating us. He is guiding us and, 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 and inflaming in us not the best of ourselves, not the highest of ourselves, but our lower animal desires, our lower animal passions and nature. That is what he's doing. That, that, see, in other words, in, in order for him to prove us unworthy, he has to keep us on the animalistic level. But understand, they will even call us a human animal. But we are not animals like other animals. We are animals in flesh that God breathed a special spirit into, which made us become distinguished from other animals, and he gave us thinking ability. He gave us intellect. So we're not like the beast of the jungles and wild animals. We are an evolved, cultured creature, at least in our intention. We know some of us can act like animals, but no, that's not our destiny. It's not, that's not our intention. As I begin to conclude my comments, let's look at the names of these deer. The names of these reindeer are not accidental. They are deliberate. Because again, each of these deer represent a certain aspect that Satan is trying to exaggerate in us so that we will be proven unworthy and go off the track. One of the reindeer are named Dancer. Dancer, to be a dancer, you have to move to a certain rhythm or to a certain beat. Now, brothers and sisters, I'm just going to say this. I'm not doing it justice, but a, a hint to the wise is sufficient. I want you to think about this. Music has the potential to be hypnotic. When some of us hear certain types of music, we could be sitting there and a song will come on and unconsciously we'll start tapping our feet. 
or we are compelled almost to get out of our seat and start moving in some type of dance form. What this symbolizes for us is, is that we get caught up in a certain rhythm, in a certain season, in a certain spell, and we are being orchestrated through that, and we are being caused to move towards a, to a certain end. Advertisers use this to make us go buy their products. There are certain jingles and phrases I can't get out of my head because they inundated with us so we will go and support their businesses and sometimes it bypasses our consciousness. What's another reindeer? Comet. When you look up Comet, it's a long-haired creature and it has an irregular body form and it also operates in a certain orbit. So brothers and sisters, again, compare this to the human being. We say that the human being is dysfunctional. We say that we're flawed. We say different things about the human being. Some of us are very abnormal. Some of us are very irregular. And I'm not ta just talking about the psyche. I'm not talking about and trying to disrespect or devalue any mental or emotional condition someone is going through. What I'm saying is we operate sometimes in an orbit that is counterintuitive or an orbit that contradicts what we were created for. So we become irregular and we are only human in form, but we no longer possess the essence of a human being. Number three, Cupid. We know Cupid is a name associated with love. It comes from a Roman god. It's the, it is the name of erotica. It is the name of sexual desires. Is this not sexual desire? Is this not an aspect that has destroyed marriages, that have brought down nations, that have created diseases? Yes. Passions, appetites, desires, Cupid. Dasher, now I want you to pay attention to Dasher because, there, again, there's no coincidence of how we use these words in our language, the English language I'm speaking of. If you ask some of our older folks how they prepare a certain meal, they don't go by a recipe. They go by their own recipe. They go by trial and error. And they say, well, how did you get it to taste like that? They said, well, I give it a little dash of this, and I give it a little dash of that. Once you start dashing, what you've done is change the original composition, and you've made it into something else. And this is what Satan is attempting to do and has done to many of us in the human world. It's an effect by mixing in something different and it changes its original composition. Prancer. This is a word that means to show off. Now, again, brothers and sisters, this is not a compliment. If I say, look at you all prancing around like you, I'm, I'm actually saying that you think you all that, you showing off. In other words, prancer represents those individuals that are pleased with one's own self. Now, the danger here is, now, to a certain extent, you should be pleased with yourself, but you got to make sure that yourself is a healthy self and yourself is striving to line up with the will and plan of God. Because if you are unhealthy in your self-concept and perception or your ego is out of line or you become arrogant, you will not, there's no room for improvement. There's no room for change because you think you've already arrived. And we know people like that. We try to help them. We try to point out their shortcomings and they say, it ain't my problem, it's your problem. Ain't nothing wrong with me. Everybody else need to get with my program. Prancer. And that's dangerous because we don't improve. How about this guy, Donner? Donner is a word that means to envelop oneself. And when you envelop oneself, now, now that's interesting, envelop. See, brothers and sisters, when we lose control, we even say it in this world, I couldn't help myself. I got all caught up. 
Caught up means, again, you're out of control. Caught up means you're following someone else's influence and someone else's inertia. And it can become self-destructive. There's so many of us that know things are not good for us, but we do it anyway because we're caught up. How about that guy Blitzer? Donner and Blitzer. Do you notice in football when there's an all-out attack on the quarterback, they call it a blitz? In football, they call it a blitz. Brothers and sisters, you and I have been blitzed. We have been attacked. And it's coming so fast, so hard and heavy that we have no defenses for it. It totally overwhelms us. In football, they said that the quarterback got sacked. Here they come with the blitz. The, the offensive line could not keep them out, and the quarterback lost large. He got, he got sacked or, or he got hurt. Blitzer. Brothers and sisters, we're being blitzed by unhealthy concepts and ideas. We're being blitzed by selfishness and greed. We're being blitzed by anti-God rhetoric, anti-religion rhetoric. We're being assaulted and attacked. And the last of these reindeer are called vixen. Again, brothers and sisters, you find this language elsewhere. That's not a compliment. If I call particularly a woman a vixen, I'm saying that she is a shrewd female with loose morals. And she is an ill-tempered woman. Yes. Vixen. These are the names of the reindeer. These are the qualities that Satan wants to either instill in us, and if we possess them to some lesser degree, he wants to exaggerate them in us so that we will fail, so that we will fall, and we will not be that honorable creature that God created, and we will not be able to discharge the trust that he gave us, making us custodian, making us caliph, making us caretaker, ruler in the earth. All praise is due to Allah. So, a couple more pieces here, and I'm done. I did leave out one reindeer, and we're going to talk about him, because he's the lead reindeer. His name is Rudolph. But I also want to make a connection for you all in Scripture. Our Imam, Waratuddin Muhammad, radiallahu anh, may God be pleased with him, taught us that many times in Scripture, when the, the word woman or a female figure is being used, that it represents a society. Now, don't misquote me. I'm not saying some of these females did not actually exist, but their story is to teach us something about characteristics and aspects of a society. Also, wom woman, the imam taught us, means womb of mind. And wombs are those things that things grow in and are nurture and cultivate. Again, a whole lot to be said, and there's different levels to the womb. But I want you to get this. That when you read about women in scripture, think about types of society. Think about types of environments that are cultivated and produced. And don't we call nations by the term her, she? When we're talking about nations, we might call America she or her because women represent society. Now, let's bring it home. Rudolph is the leader of all the reindeer. And Rudolph has a red nose. And the red nose is leading the pack. Yes. Now, they may use the excuse that the red nose serves as a light that lights the way, but the red nose represents what I've already said, appetites, passions, desires, out of control, unchecked. Yes unchecked and I remind you that that I'll say it this way that sleigh that Santa and Satan is riding is leading society through passions remember Satan says he will assault us from every direction and the fact that the nose is red is one thing 
but also the nose is symbolic of our ability. See, when we breathe through our nose, we breathe air through our nose, and when a horse is running at full throttle, its nose flares open and close and helps give it the oxygen it needs for energy and strength. So air is symbolic of influences. So if, 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 if the influences, if the nose is influences, we're allowing red or passion or appetites or desires to influence how we operate in the world. Now watch this. Do you think it's an accident that the way Santa delivers gifts why don't he just do like UPS? Why don't he do like FedEx and just ring your doorbell or leave it at the front of the house? Why does he have to come through the chimney? Because the chimney represents something. He enters the household, every household, by a chimney. The chimney is a fireplace, again, symbolic of our passions. Did you get that, family? The chimney is where we bear wood, uh, burn wood. A chimney is considered a fireplace. You put logs on it, etc. But fire is heat. So again, the message here is, if you want to know how Satan get it, did it, you know how we say, I couldn't help myself, the devil made me do it, which is a lie. But do you know how the, the, the devil gets to us? Through our appetites and our passions. He comes in through our chimney. And that's how he gets us to do his bidding. So that Satan, that Santa, manipulates and rides and exploits our lower desires and uses them for his schemes. I will put in them false desires. Allahu Akbar. God is greater. So brothers and sisters, thank you for allowing me an opportunity to share this message with you. And I pray that it's help, helpful. I'm not going to make concluding comments yet because I'm going to look here on the page and I want to see if perhaps uh, someone has some questions or comments. Uh, let me take a look here and see what I can pull up here on the questions and comments from the viewers. So we can kind of go into this, this conversation here before I close out. We still have a little bit of time. Let's see. They say we got about 31 comments. I don't know why I'm having trouble seeing them. You know, uh, Facebook would decide today to come up with uh, a new format here, one that I haven't familiarized myself with. Let me see if I can get some help here. Because I do see a bunch of comments here. So. Here we go. Let's take a look here. Now they're showing up. We have one comment from Sister Zarina. She says, thank you, Imam. Such clarity. Allahu Akbar. Then we have, uh, I may mispronounce this, Jehriel, um, who says, grateful for the message, elder brother. This individual calls me an elder brother. I guess I'm looking at her. Praise be to Allah. Sister Rachel says, excellent and thorough. Alhamdulillah. Imam Alim says, Allahu Akbar, along with Sister Rachel. Sister Zarina says, yes, women give birth to the world. 
What an honor to be a woman. I agree. Allahu Akbar. Muhammad the prophet, upon him be peace, said that paradise lies at the foot of a mother. Wonderful. Sister Ebony says words matter. He may I lean more connections. Serena says, wow, blitzed. That's right. <laughs> we being blitzed and assaulted. Imam Alim reminds us that in definition is direction. Sister Althea Downs there in the Dallas area. I give you a shout out, my sister. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you for joining us. She says, no doubt. Imam Alim says, connections, connections, connections. Yes, Satan is busy. All right, alhamdulillah, we got some greetings. Brother, Brother Doug says, very masterfully explained. That's kind of you, Brother Doug. Praise be to Allah. And, and alhamdulillah, of course, is, uh, we give Allah the praise. We thank Allah, and we thank Allah for Imam Dr. Allahuddin Shabazz. I got to give him credit. I used his material. Radi Allahu an. Greeting from Brother Antonio, Sister Phyllis, Sister Hafiza Shamsuddin. Yes. I think congratulations in order for her. She's doing some wonderful things there, I believe, still in the Virginia area. Yes, alhamdulillah. Okay, okay, yes. Uh, Sister Jessica, Brother Devon, I give you all shout out and greetings and welcome. I believe we do have a question here. Acknowledging Brother Willie. Brother Willie says, Alhamdulillah, informed, keep us from being deformed. Ah, beautiful. I like that. Informed keeps us from becoming deformed. What's under, what understanding needs for future uh, explanation? Sister Ebony asks, does Santa, or is this the idea to reward unchecked behavior. Hmm. Let me see if I read that right. Does Santa, in quotes, or is the idea to reward unchecked behavior? Hmm. That's a great question, sister. And perhaps There could be an aspect of that, in my opinion, because when you feel somebody appreciates what you're doing and compliments what you're doing, there's an aspect of human beings that consider they're encouraged by that. You know, when, when you receive a compliment, there's a, there's a built-in encouragement there. Oh, somebody liked that. Oh, that's good. That's, that's a benefit. So that aspect of us uh, may continue to go that way. There are some people that are proud of their re rebellion, that are proud of their looseness, that are proud of their vulgarity, pro pro proud of their promiscuity. They, they consider that a badge of honor when people acknowledge that. But I suspect those individuals do that on the surface, but I believe deep down inside in the quiet recesses of their heart and mind, they know that that's not the best practice or the best way. So thank you for that, Sister Ebony. But I would also maintain, though, that as Allah says in the Quran, Satan's main goal is to humiliate and debase us and prove us unworthy. Brother Doug says, it's wonderful to live in this time that was predicted that the earth would be open up and reveal all of its secrets. We are so blessed to witness this clear wisdom. Allahu Akbar. Thank you, Brother Doug. And I love the way you tied in the Quran uh, in that expression. 
uh, that in these last days uh, the earth will manifest its secrets. Praise be to Allah. One of Allah's attributes is the revealer. Sister Hamidullah, I'm sorry, I said sister. That could be brother. Uh, but I'll just, uh, it, the name is Hamidullah uh, Sahir. Assalamu alaikum, brother Imam, and we are blessed to have the students of Imam Waratuddin Muhammad for those who are teaching his Quranic language on Al-Islam and his tafsir on the Quran and the e exemplification, or pardon me, the exemplified way of life and leadership of Muhammad the Prophet, the prayers and the peace be on him. Thank you, Brother Hamid Allah, or Sister Hamid Allah, I apologize, the gender is not clear to me. Because sometimes Hamid Allah is a last name. But thank you so much for tuning in. And please stay tuned. All right. Praise be to Allah. I won't keep you, dear family. Let you get back to your wonderful day. If I miss someone, I apologize. Of course, we have lots of greetings. And I want to say to all of you, Alaikum Assalam wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuhu. And we thank Allah for technology. We thank Allah. And, and, and brothers and sisters, you can go so many places and get so many wonderful presentations. We thank you for tuning in with us. And I want to encourage you, whether it's with us or wherever you go, please go where you need to feed your soul, to increase your knowledge, and to get closer to Allah. The point is this, though, that when when uh when when we get closer to Allah and we come into these knowledges and reality they don't mean anything if we don't apply them in our lives brothers and sisters i got to tell you this allah uses the analogy i believe it's surah al-juma 62 in the quran allah uses the analogy analogy of certain types of people that are like donkeys they got all this knowledge, all these books and tunes strapped to their backs, but they are not benefiting from them. So we seek refuge in Allah, as the dua says, Ya Allah, we seek refuge in you from a knowledge that does not benefit us. So we thank Allah that we were able to explain this, but we pray Allah that this is empowering and helps you take charge of your life and bring you closer to your creator. Again, I want to invite you to be with us this coming Friday, which in America is Christmas Day. And we will speak about the Islamic perspective. And this might not be the title, but that's not the point. We're going to talk about Jesus upon a be peace on Friday. Since this is a day that the, the world is honoring him, we want to honor him as well as Muslims in such a way that sheds light on the Islamic perspective on him and what God has said about him and what he means as a sign, S-I-G-N, as a sign in the world. Not only him, but it's kind of a little partnership. Allah says Jesus and his mother are a sign. So until then, dear family, you all have an awesome day. And we continue to pray for our nation. We continue to pray that these two vaccines that have been approved are really what they say they are and that they're able to deliver what the scientists say they can deliver by Allah's grace and by his permission let's put an end to this pandemic let's put an end to suffering and the loss of lives regardless though we're going to trust God through it all he has the plan nothing happens without his permission and nothing befalls you or nothing escapes you except that which is already in the will and plan ربنا لا تزك قلوبنا بعد أي ثديتنا وهاب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب رب O oh Allah or our Lord please don't allow our hearts to deviate now that you've guided them aright but grant us something of special mercy from thine own presence for you are the granter of bounties without measure الحمد لله رب العالمين آمين have a great week, family. 
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Thank you.